if you're going to get into a relationship, I really wish it works. I want it to work. I want to see you make lots of babies. I want to see families work again. I want to see strong fathers, strong families. Sign that prenup. But if not, work on your frame. Get in shape. Make some money. Get a house or an apartment. Get a car. Get on your grind, right? Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I have a question that I want to ask you regarding marriage today. As someone in his early 20s, I've already seen some friends of mine, my age range, getting married. And some already thinking about it. What are your thoughts on getting married at a young age, especially, quote unquote, nowadays? And do you believe it's wiser to be a monk for most of your 20s, focusing on building your wealth and your character, and then bring a woman into your life in your late 20s and 30s? Uh, and if you recommend the latter, how do you go about uh, not being promiscuous until you decide to get married later in life? So, of course, I have to start with my personal experience, right? And my personal experience may not necessarily, and it doesn't line up with some of the advice I'm going to give you. Um, I can tell you for sure, in retrospect, that's why I know it's sure, because I can look back and it's like, oh, hmm, that's what happened. Um, for sure, I wouldn't be as half as successful as a man or as stable in my life as a man if I didn't get married early. I just know that because I know my personality and I would have been all over the place. But by virtue of me getting married early, I was 23 years old. I started having children at 24. By the time I was 29, maybe right about 30, I had four children. So I had five other people. And my wife was a caretaker. She's a mother. That's my mom's, my wife's career. She's a mom. She's a mother. She's a homemaker. And so it very it put a fire under my ass at a very early age to hurry up and get shit done. And I got to tell you, I got a lot of shit done. Maybe not everybody has the amount of vitality that I had and luck that I had. I can tell you there's a whole lot of luck associated with the way I pulled this off. I didn't pull this off. A lot of it is the grace of God. I got to give that up. But the, by virtue of the type of man that I am, I was energized by that pressure. That's why I'm a strong man. I like resistance. I like hard shit. I like challenges. And to me, it was, you know, kind of in a, it's kind of a challenge. And through, through my early 20s, I started and raised, a, I got married, started to raise a family. I started a business. I started two businesses, in fact, in my early 20s. I started Strength Camp and Strength Camp Media. Strength Camp is my gym, so I was running a gym and I was also running a media company. Because then I started making YouTube videos, and when I started, even before I started making YouTube videos, I was creating eBooks, I was doing e-courses, you know, most of what I do today. So I created two, I had two companies, and I became a professional straw man. What else, right? I was, I was a pro athlete with two businesses uh, and a family <laughs> by the time I was 29. <laughs> and had I not had had I not that had that to focus myself on, bro, especially because a man doesn't reach his sexual market value until his 30s, I would have been, I guarantee I would have been a slut. I would have definitely been a slut. I would have been out there. I pr may have had multiple babies mamas, right? Just thinking about the way I am, I'm impulsive, right? I would have multiple babies mamas. I would have, it would not have, my life would not be very good right now. Just knowing myself. Um, I'm just saying in retrospect, I'm looking back and I'm grateful for the choices that I made. And had I not had that kind of focus and that intensity because of the burden of a family, I don't think I would have done it. Anything could have happened. I don't know what could have happened. But just looking back, I'm like happy. I'm like, wow, whew, 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 good thing, right? I was focused. I was not out there spilling my sex energy with and 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 uh you know being promiscuous i had one wife and she was pregnant a lot of the time and i was working and i was building and i was grinding and i when we did it together and so i'm also grateful for the graces of god for putting the type of woman that i have in my life i didn't know what i was doing i didn't know what kind i mean i started dating him when i was very young but again like i you know it 
hindsight is twenty twenty. I had I really had no idea what I was doing. I didn't have any advice. There was no Yo Elliot on YouTube or like you know Red Pill on Reddit. None of that. None of that existed. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. I was just doing basically what I saw my father do, and I'm. That's a part of the grace is the fact that I watched my father do it. My father got married young, had a lot of children and busted his face and sacrificed and worked and it worked out well. My parents have been married uh, 50 years, right? My parents have been together, I'm 40. So yeah, going, probably going on 45 years. My parents have been together and, and, and now they're like in their 70s, so that's it. So I come from, I come from a traditional family. And so for me, a traditional family made sense and for Colleen, my wife, who did not come from a traditional family, she saw at a very early age what my parents had in a, in a traditional family. And so she wanted a tra traditional family. My mother became her mentor. My mom's like her mentor. My mother is my wife's mentor. It's a little weird, right? But I'm grateful for it because she saw what was required to have a healthy, strong, long-term, you know, forever traditional family together and so her and I built together right when I say built together meaning we both played our roles we know both knew our roles we both played our part and we both dominated in that direction I could tell you that if she was a working woman like if she was out there in the world you know uh strong independent you know popping out the babies and then getting back out there in the world um and we didn't sacrifice by having only one income which was mine uh, I don't think it would have worked out as well either. We cho we did a lot of traditional things. Home births, natural home births. My wife well, breastfed all the kids um, and she is a, a homemaker. Home, home, home. We had it honed into our heads that we wanted a home. And so we did things very differently. I know you say nowadays, I'm not that much older than you. Right. You say you're, you're in your early 20s. So actually, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm twice your age. But right. I'm still a Gen Xer. And as a Gen Xer and a late Gen Xer, I, I, I am a lot like you millennials. I'm more like you millennials than I am the boomers. Right. Although now, as I'm getting older, I'm getting more of a boomer mind, mindset. <laughs> right. But I totally get where you guys are coming from. But the only difference was I didn't have I didn't have smartphones. I had the Internet, but I didn't have kin. What do you call that? Tinder. I didn't have Tinder and Bumbles. <laughs> I couldn't bumble my way around these bitches. It's just, it didn't exist, right? And I didn't have and I didn't have uh, porn. I never got hooked on porn because I wasn't. I I didn't have it. I might have got hooked on porn like you guys. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if I had it in my in my early twenties was there and I didn't have. I wasn't married, right? Because you don't need porn when you're married. I know some guys, they, they, they're still addicted to porn when they're married, and that's a weird thing to me. I'm like, why, why are you watching porn? Just make your make porn, right? Why are you watching people have sex? Just have sex. Eh, it's a little weird to me. But uh, I, things could have been different. So like I say, grace of God, grace of God. And as a result of what I grew up with, a traditional family, and uh, and then – Raising a traditional family, right? My wife, we, we, we play traditional roles, right? Uh, as a result, I see the benefit of it and I, I'm a promoter of it. I promote it. I want to see families work. I want to see families work so badly. I want it to work for everybody, but I understand where we are. And I'm doing my part to... Make men strong again. Really, that's my that's my mission. That's my purpose. It's who I am. It's what I've done from the beginning. It's just getting clearer and clearer for me as I as I move through my life that I'm here to do that. And what does making men strong again look like? A big part of it is related to family, fatherhood, patriarchy. Right? I'm a proponent proponent of the patriarchy. Right? Because I see it working in my life. I, I came from a place where it worked. It worked in my family. And it works with my family, my parents, and then my, myself. So I have no other, I can't deny it. it. In fact, it's what worked for thousands of years up until like the 1960s, right? So it, this, it's a brand new creation 
uh, all this rampant divorce and promiscuity and, you know, abortion and birth control pills and feminism, the cancer of feminism, all like, and I'm, when I talk about feminism, I'm not talking about women getting, getting up to be able to vote, although it started there. And when women get the, get the chance to vote, have their, 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 uh, have their say, well, then you end up where we are right now, where they start voting for things that don't make any sense. And the entire Democratic Party, which is ruled by Satan, came in through the snake. And who's the snake talk to? Women. It's just it's where we are as a result. But I'm really talking about, you know, if for a woman to vote, I think the, she votes best by raising good children. That's how a woman votes for what she wants in her society by raising children that exemplify the values and virtues that she wants to see in her, in her uh, world, rather than ha canceling her husband's vote because, of, because she wants to be able to you know, cheer on other women so they can kill their babies. That's really what it's become. Women being able to vote created a division in the family. It was a part of creating division in the family so that the husband's values can be subverted, right? The patriarchal values could be subverted. But eat, like I said, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about third wave feminism. Tr what do they call it? Uh, intersectionality. We're now basically, if you don't recognize, BLM is a feminist organization. That's what it is. It's run by a bunch of black fe female lesbians. A bunch of lesbians. They don't give anything. They don't give a care, care about black men. These women do not care about black men. They're feminists. They want to destroy the family. Right? So we live at the end time where f the, the final battle is for the family. I just put up a post, or I didn't put it up, but my, my guys put up a post, a uh, picture of a little boy, and it, talk, it gave some statistics as to how boys who are fatherless suffer as a result. And it's where we are today. And I think if we're going to turn things around, we have, to, we, have to turn, we have to go back to the family. Not just go back to the family, we got to go back to the father, the father above. We got to forgive our fathers and then we got to become strong fathers. This world will not succeed without strong fathers. And when there's strong fathers, there's strong families. This is, this is, this is a part of my mission. I can't deny it. Um, but feminism has destroyed the family destroyed it destroyed women is destroyed women something like n close to 90 percent of divorces are initiated by women what does that do it usurps the power it usurps the the hierarchy in the family with a fa where the father now has all the responsibility and no no authority you have all the responsibility as a man in the family but you have no authority because of the state all a woman has to do is go cry to uncle sam go cry to daddy government and you're out you're gone right you gotta you gotta be a good boy and do what your wife tells you otherwise she gonna sick a lawyer on you it's fucked up it's real fucked up this is why the natural order works the natural order works god in christ christ over man man over woman woman over children but now there's no god so there's no father there's no god the father we live in an antichrist world. We put children on the pedestal. And when you put children on the pedestal, the women are the ones that hold them up and, you, and the man is, is, is hunched over. So we got to restore the family. We got to restore the natural order of the family. And that means going back to traditional marriage and traditional uh, family roles. And uh, that's not going to be an easy thing to do. And so my advice Given that, given that I am, I want this to work. I want families to work, but given the climate, first of all, you got to be real. Like I said, by the grace of God, you know, I'm not, I'm not simping over my wife when I say this because I don't give her the credit because I don't think she knew what the fuck she was doing either. I give God the credit. I give God the credit that I'm the type of man and she's the type of woman, and we had the certain circumstances that lined up in this particular way, and it turned out, it turned out great. Boom, right? I, right? I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna simp over her like, oh, she, I'm so lucky for her. She's fucking lucky for me that she got me. And it's by it's this, you know, the grace of God. So the first thing is you gotta, you gotta, you have to vet these women. And I've been talking about this for a long time. If you're gonna get married, and it's hard to vet a woman in her 20s because you don't know what she's gonna become, right? Early 20s is good because a lot of times 
The more sexual partners that a woman has, the more erratic her emotions are going to be. Because every man that a woman has sex with leaves an imprint on her. So if you're going to get married early, like for example, my wife and I, we, started, we were together all through high school, all through college. Neither of us have any significant kind of body count. I have not slept with a lot of women. And my wife, pretty much just me. So we have very low body count. That's the first thing. I wouldn't get married with anybody in their early 20s. Or um, you know, one of the advantages of getting married in their early 20s is that you both, both she and you have a low body count. Um, and so there's less of a chance of her flipping out and becoming somebody else. Unless the feminist world gets a, a grip on her. And the feminist world is going to get a grip on her through the music, through the media, through her friends. Um, so anyway, practical advice, practical ideas on what to do. I don't care if you're in your early 20s or, or if you're in your 40s. If you decide to get married, do not get married without a prenuptial agreement. Do not. Do not. Because, look, you can't avoid it. Is the, the state is already a part of your marriage, whether you like it or not. The minute you move in with a woman or she moves in with you, never move in with a woman. But Scratch that. Sorry, I said that. Y'all moving together or she moves in with you. The minute y'all are living in the same house, the state now has his, he's got his fingers in your, in your marriage, in your, in, your, in your bed, right? In your wallet. And you, the state's got all those nasty fingers in there. So you cannot avoid the state, even if you don't marry a woman. I was watching a, a video where this guy was telling a story about this dude up in Canada who was dating this lady. He was dating her long distance, they never married each other. They never lived with each other. They were just dating long distance for like, you know, maybe 10 years or whatever. And maybe like they would meet up and then she would go back. And he, I think she lived in the U.S. and he lived in Canada. Well, after he broke up with her, she went to the courts and was like, I want his money. And the courts gave her his money. He had to pay up for having this long distance, non-married. And, and so what I'm telling you, is that as men, we're screwed at the minute we screw a woman. The minute, you, the minute you get involved with a woman, the law is against you. The world is against you. What do you do? MGTOW? MGTOW's not a bad idea. And I know you mentioned something to that degree, and I'll go in that direction. But if you do, because I want marriage to work, I want families to work, men are not going to become strong again without fathers. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The state ain't going to make men strong again. I'm not, I'm doing the best that I can with videos, but I'm not a real father. I'm a father figure. Men need fathers. So that's enough, enough rant on that. I believe that. I believe that has to happen. But if you are getting involved with a woman, you, you gotta, you have, the state is already involved. Somebody as well sign a contract. Sign a contract as early as possible. Right. Look, I love you. I really, truly do. And really a relationship, a marriage is between a man, a woman and God, the father. That's really all it should be about. But the state's involved. We've, we're already basically communist in a way, in many different ways. So you got to you, you got to you have to do that. You got to do it because you don't know what's going to happen. Right. Both ways. I my because I want families to work out. I tell men, you do not be adulterous. You know what I'm saying? Like, do the right thing in terms of fidelity to your family, right? Because that's usually, you know, for men, that's really usually where you screw up. Men screw up in infidelity because we like to have sex. We like to have sex with lots of variety, right? It's our nature. Doesn't mean that we, doesn't mean that we succumb to our nature, but if we are not virtuous, <laughs> our base nature will take over. Women, they get disillusioned. This is why women stray. They get disillusioned. They fall out. And because the world uh, worships emotion, emotionalism, women think that just because they, their emotions change, that they, that they need to shake up and change their whole life. And so they fall out of love. Men who, men who cheat on their wives still love their wives. But if a woman cheats on a man, she don't love that man. <laughs> right? It's not, she can't just cheat on him and still love him. She, she, her, she's left. When a woman cheats on you, that's it. A man will cheat, but he'll still love his wife. It's just our nature that, that, that this is the case. And, you know, they've shown this, uh, you know, I think I remember reading this in, you know, some, some book about marriage counseling. But when a woman cheats, it's because it's over. 
she she and she'll even have like uh resentful feelings towards him and that's why they drag you through that divorce rape right that's what they call it divorce rape she'll take you to it. so anyway if you're gonna do it i want it to work i want it to happen but lord you gotta get a you gotta get a prenuptial <laughs> gotta get that prenuptial you gotta do it <laughs> uh now i wouldn't go looking for a woman I wouldn't, in the early 20s, I wouldn't go looking for them. S do some semen retention, right? Retain your semen. Learn how to transmutate that and put that. See, I think I would have been really successful if if I was doing everything I did, but I, I was, like, say I didn't marry my wife, but I got into the work that I was getting into and I was doing the sports that I was doing, but... I wasn't fapping, right? In retrospect, like I've, I've had to make a game plan for young Elliot and I wasn't getting married. I say, no fapping, no porn, no fapping. And don't have sex with women. Do not look, go seeking women for sex. That's Seeking women for sex is, 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 is damaging to men in so many different ways. On so many different levels, it's damaging. I mean... Everything from the way the chemicals in the brain change, right, physiologically, down to, which is also chemical places of emotion, the, 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 the sex goggles that we put on because we no longer can see ourselves and women for what they are. We see them as drug dealers because that's really what promiscuous sex is about. It's about getting a high. It's about getting, getting a hit off that peace leave, right? You're getting a hit off that. So I would say, I would, because you guys... You guys are the biohacking generation. You guys in, in your 20s right now, you guys are in your biohacking. You're the biohacking generation. There's more biohacks available and there's more that we know about our bodies and our brains than ever before. And I would look into just pure sexual transmutation like a monk. Go into a MGTOW monk mode. Tra sexual transmutation is not as, as, as mystical as it sounds. It basically is semen retention. Stop busting nuts. Stop busting nuts. Stop looking for a place to bust those nuts and build up your frame. You got to build your frame so that you can bring a woman into your frame. What does building your frame look like? Don't be fooled by Instagram. It's not about having the fanciest car. It's not about, about throwing cash around because those aren't the kind of women you want to attract anyway. You don't want those Insta thoughts, those chicks who, you know, you know, if you see those like prank videos where like they'll just, they'll ignore a guy until he walks up to his car and they're like, oh, uh, 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 who are you? You know, even that's like immediately that's a turn off. That's not the kind of woman you want. But you want to build a solid frame, meaning what? Have your own place. You have your own place. You have your own decent car. You don't need a Lamborghini. You get your own decent car that works. You get your own apartment or, or even save up and buy your house. Get a, get a job, right? A lot, of, a lot of what keeps men lost is this sense that they need to get be passionate about something. I need to find this and create a passionate business. You don't need that. That's it, in a lot of ways that's like chasing that's like chasing vagina is chasing is it's uh, chasing thrills once again. No, I spoke about it earlier. You got to find something tolerable that's profitable and dominate it, right? And then build your frame. Get some money in the bank. Right. Know that you don't need a woman, that she is just icing on the cake. And. When when we don't put sex in front. Right. And again, like I, I get it. I'm a little old school. Maybe I'm out of touch. But but hear me out, because maybe we could change this culture when we don't put sex in front. We put relationship in front and relationship relationship requires courting. Relationship requires vetting. Sex doesn't require vetting, right? People don't even care if they have STDs or whatever like that, right? Like you should be getting tested, but people don't even test that. They just put their dicks in anything. Wow, well, well, there's a warm pussy, right? Put it, put it in, right? You lose yourself completely. But when, relationship, when sex is inside the framework of relationship, 
you hold the power as a man. You hold the power because men hold the keys to relationship. This is why all these women who are sluts their whole life, and then when they get into their late 30s and 40s, and they're like, what happened? Where are all the good men? It's like you gave away the only value you ever had, which was that pussy. That's the only thing you ever had. You gave it away for free, and now you want men to buy this old used up cow? Ha! You gave away all that milk, all that time for free, and now you want a relationship? Mm-mm. It don't work that way. So you as a man, have to, you have to set the frame in terms of, do you want a relationship? Well, the, the sex will happen within the frame of my relationship, right? Unless you're just masturbating with other people's bodies or what, what ends up being worse is you become addicted to that disordered twat. You don't want that. So in order you know, to re answer your question about being promiscuous, you you value your sex as a prize that they have to get once they prove themselves worthy of your relationship. Don't give your seed away. Steve the Dean Williams, check him out on YouTube. I love that guy, Steve the Dean. Tell him I sent you. He has he he talks about prizing your seed. Your seed is the prize. Don't be just giving any women your seed, right? You got to understand, recognize the value of your seed. You, they call it your essence, right? A man's essence. I'm not going to be busting my essence over every single thoughts, thighs. That ain't going to happen. So that's my perspective on that. Uh, if you're going to get into a relationship, I really wish it works. I want it to work. I want to see you make lots of babies. I want to see families work again. I want to see strong fathers, strong families. Sign that prenup. But if not, work on your frame. Get in shape. Make some money, get a house or an apartment, get a car, get on your grind, right? Get all the things that you need so that when it's time, you could, you could say to a woman, look, I, you're the prize. I'm the prize. I'm the prize, right? Do you want to be a part of this? Well, show me you're worthy. Oh, and you know what you get to do at that point? Check this out. Women, it's okay for women to have standards. You ever notice this? It's okay for women to have standards about men. He's got to be six foot something and he got to make six figures, right? It's okay. The world, they clap for that. Oh, you go girl. Even though she's like 280 pounds. You go girl, right? She got, it's okay for her standards. Well, guess what? That's backwards. Men should have the standards. So you could scorn nasty woman. The fact is that men, just because we're so pussy craze, we don't, we don't vet these women. We don't have no standards. You have no standards. Have standards with these women. No, I don't date fat women. This is one from Coach Greg Adams. Check him out. <laughs> I like that guy too. I don't date fat women. Have a standard for yourself. I don't date fat women. I don't date women with tattoos. I don't wait, date women in debt, right? Whatever it is for you. Have standards, have strong standards. And you know what happens when you put up standards like that? First, women scream and cry and they call you misogynist. Then they get in line. Okay, we gotta stop this shit. Don't, don't marry promiscuous women, right? Of course, she's never gonna tell you how many men she's been with but you can kind of gauge based on her age, right? When you're in your 30s, find a young spring chicken, one that hasn't been sucked on, chewed on, and, and, and bust, busted nuts inside of her for the past 10 years, right? Don't date, sing, don't date single mothers, right? We should have a standard about that. Oh, you already have babies. Sorry, don't be a hero. Don't be a hero and try to save these women who made bad decisions and now they got babies. You suffer now, yes? Oh, you're a nice girl, but you made bad decisions. And I don't need a woman that makes bad decisions in my life, right? Whatever it is for you. I'm not telling you, to, you know, what to do, but you gotta have standards. So that's it. That's it. That's all. That's what I got to say on that, Jorge. <laughs> Done. 
Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, and you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way, in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. And me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.